Hey everybody, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Kingsborough TV Live. I am Town Media Director Steve Brogan and what we're going to be talking about today or what we're going to be doing is discussing the upcoming seminar by Dr. Ruth Poti. Uh, it's on addiction uh, and how it affects the brain. There's a whole bunch of really interesting and technical aspects to it. Uh, it's a fascinating seminar. I was at the one uh, a couple of years ago with Dr. Poti, so we hope that everybody can come out and check it out. We're going to give you some information on that, some details. Uh, I have a couple of guests today, Dave Kinsman and Bill Garr. Dave Kinsman is from the, um, here, let me read this, it's from the uh, River of Divine Mercy Collaborative. You're, you volunteer to help us out. And then Bill Garr runs Lowell House. Right. So right. Uh, uh, before I get on to our guests, I just want to remind everybody, if you're watching on uh, Facebook, you can check it out on the various pages we share it ac across, as well as you can ask questions if you have any questions for, uh, for Bill or Dave. Uh, feel free to uh, chime in and ask those questions. Uh, you can also watch us on YouTube, and same thing. You can ask questions there if you'd like, and you can watch it on Comcast Channel 8, Verizon 29 here in Tingsboro, and at tingsboroma.gov on our video on demand and streaming service. So lots of different ways you can interact and watch this program. Uh, and don't forget also to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe with all your uh, with your vast social media networks. It really helps us get the, uh, the message out. The more people who interact with our page, the more people uh, get to see all this stuff as they pop up. So uh, lots of cool ways you can uh, help us out and we can help you out too by getting you some good information. And that some of that information is actually what we're going to chat about today, which is this seminar by Dr. Ruth Poti. Yeah, and, and, and seminar, Steve, makes it sound so dry. It does, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not good. Seminar's seminar. not a good word. <laughs> but this is really an amazing program. And mm -hmm. Dr. Poti has been around. She's actually a family physician from Greenfield. She mm -hmm. has a full-time family practice. And uh, she, uh, about 10 years ago, started to see a lot of family members, a lot of children that she was that she was a uh, 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 physician for. She started to see a lot of addiction issues. Mm -hmm. And thought, you know, in medical school, I know nothing about addiction. No one ever taught me. There wasn't a, a rotation uh, for, for addiction. So she went back and actually got her board certification in addictions medicine. Mm -hmm. And uh, then began to travel around and uh, talk a little bit about what addiction means, how it happens in families, mm -hmm. how it happens in, in individuals and families. Mm -hmm. Uh, what it ultimately means in terms of brain physiology, mm -hmm. and she really begins to explain why it's a disease as opposed to just uh, what a lot of people felt in the past that's just a case of will, you know, if, mm -hmm. you, if you're too weak to give up those drugs, if you just want to be a fun-loving person, well, nothing could be less true about people in addiction. They are not fun-loving people. It's mm -hmm. not a fun disease. Right, yeah. It is a compulsive disease. And that's the way she describes it. So she is excellent. And all this sounds pretty dry, especially when you call it a seminar. <laughs> right. But in the end, she is bright. She is funny. She is great to talk to. Yeah. And it's a fast hour and a half. And it is. And now uh, the, dra the, the, the River of Divine Mercy Catholic Collaborative. Did I get that all in, Dave? You got it. You got <laughs> it. I got it. I've Good been job. practicing that in front of a mirror every day. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's great. And uh, they were our partners in the, the last time. And, and this is our uh, attempt, really, to get the communities of faith involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, one of the statistics I presented to, the, uh, to, to a, a group, and Dave will talk a little bit about Glyla in, in Greater Lowell, mm -hmm. Uh, but that uh, about 80 to 90 percent in the CASA study back a few years ago uh, of people in addiction were spiritual people. Mm -hmm. They believed in a God. They believed in a higher power. Uh, they, they really felt they were spiritual. And the whole AA movement is spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so they came back and ultimately then said, do you ever confide in your priest or your rabbi or your iman? Only 9 percent said they ever talked to their, their priest or their really? rabbi. Wow. So it, it's part of, I think, the problem with the communities of faith, uh, part of the failings of the community of faith, mm -hmm. when they have so much to offer families and, and people especially with addiction issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think the uh, Father Clancy and uh, Dave Kinsman and some of the church folks over there I think really made up their mind that this is a good way to pull in the communities of faith, mm -hmm. get them involved, and at the same time provide a great service to the to the communities. The last time I think, uh, which you were there, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, we had I think probably uh, close to 400 people there. There was a lot. So so the last time was at the the same place, the Lowell Elks Lodge. Right. That's a big room when they open up both of those rooms and make one giant room. The, the whole room was full, completely full. Yeah, so I, think, it was. I think totally. It yeah. holds about 600 people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a lot. Uh, so before we move on really quickly, I just want to mention for folks so that so that you know this uh, this event that we're talking about. We won't call it a seminar because we'll get the kind of dry, even though it says it on the 
the flyer, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever well, made the flyer, they, good job. They, they, <laughs> they actually say community forum, and I said nobody really <laughs> wants to go to community <laughs> forum. But uh, uh, so I want to let folks know though uh, the the event is on November eighth. It's at the Lowell Elks Lodge on Old Ferry Road in Lowell, um, and it's from seven to nine p.m. So you'll get to hear from Dr. Poti this this uh, presentation that she puts on. It's riveting. I mean, I was you know actually I left that the last time, and I was like, wow, that was the just the depth that that she gets into as far as how the mind works with addiction and uh, just all of it was really fascinating. Yeah, and that's really the first half of the presentation. And, and the best part of it, it's all free. Yeah, it's it a is, free event, it right? Is. That's an excellent point. It's a and free that, event. That, yeah. That's the best price you can do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, can't discount from free. Uh, <laughs> but that's kind of half the presentation. And mm -hmm. you're right, the first couple of times, now I listen to it because I also teach a class and I, sh I, I show it to every class. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, uh, yeah, I was, I was astounded at the amount I thought I knew that I didn't know and how much she, and our staff loves her too because of that. Mm -hmm. So people walk out of there, even the, the grizzled old addiction professionals saying, wow, I really understand things that I never knew before. Mm -hmm. And it answers a lot of questions. But then she gets into what parents can do, how they should react, what right. kinds of strategies they can use. And it's absolutely inv invaluable. Yeah, invaluable. she gives you an ABCs of how to how to help combat the problem. Right. I had one gentleman at the end of the presentation the last time come up to me with tears in his eyes, and he said, you know, my son went into rehab today. Wow. And I absolutely didn't understand what addiction was. Mm. I kept telling him, just quit. And you can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that easy. No. Now, now tell me from your perspective, because I, I feel like the, the tie-in with the religious community is, is obviously it's very, very important, and it, and it can hopefully help because this, the, the addiction problem, obviously it's a, it's a deep problem. There's a lot to it. But uh, tell me about how that, that, uh, well, the two me, work together. Let me tell you how this all started. It started over three years ago okay. uh, with one of the committees we have in, our, in, in one of the three parishes. And mm -hmm. by the way, the River of Divine Mercy consists of three large parishes, St. Rita's in Lowell, mm -hmm. St. Marguerite de Ville in Dracut, mm -hmm. and St. Uh, Mary Magdalene's in Tingsboro. Okay. And I happened to be on the advisory committee at St. Mary Magdalene's. And we had been talking about addiction for some time. And uh, we have an organization called the Men of St. Joseph, which meets at different parishes, mm -hmm. okay? And we decided that we had to find someone that could help us with this. And a friend of mine, who happens to be a Rotarian brother of Bill's, said, I can help you. And he gave me Bill's number. And this is how this whole thing started. And then we kind of just grew and grew and grew. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get some sponsors to pay for some of the things we needed to do, the signs, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we decided that we should do it again. And both Bill and I, uh, I actually joined, I don't think you've joined, Bill, but I actually joined an organization called GLILA. And don't ask me what it is. It's the Greater <laughs> Lowell something or other affiliation. Greater <laughs> Lowell, <laughs> Greater Lowell <laughs> Interfaith Leadership oh, Association. There you go. Oh, there you go. Affiliation, yeah. right. That's a mouthful. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it consists of every religion that you can imagine, some I never heard of, but... Their meetings are once a month, and there's usually 30, 35 people there from leaders of different churches and synagogues and everything you can imagine, mm -hmm. and they're also helping us promote this this time. Excellent. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, and that's, and that's very helpful. So that's, that's the way we kind of pull in that community, and, and mm -hmm. uh, David is in his uh, – Staff, uh, David. I mean, you don't have a staff, actually. You should. Uh, <laughs> da Dave and the people two from. Cats. <laughs> <laughs> da da you need a staff, Dave. Uh, uh, Dave and the uh, the people from the uh, Divine River Mercy Collaborative, I think, have been excellent in coordinating it. We've got signs up, and I, I think we'll fill it up again. Yeah. No, you come at it. It's a it's a good angle that you're coming at it too, from because I mean, obviously, prevention is where. You'd hope to prevent everybody from getting addicted in the first place, right. but you can't do that. You're not right. going to get there. So, helping people understand the uh, the the end side of it, the addiction side, and getting people to uh, how to change their brain, basically, I think, is where it's really wh where the work is really going to have to be done. Well, and, and that's that's an important piece. Uh, you know, Dr. Poti will explain. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a little a little piece of what she's going to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, she'll explain this as, as the compulsivity that we all have, and it's sort of built into the mechanism. Mm -hmm. 
So it gets us up in the morning, gets us to get food when we were at a different stage in our existence. It, we went out and hunted. We got our bows and arrows. And, right. and that's how we survived, basically. Yep. That same survival instinct, that compulsivity, can turn into compulsive behavior for uh, lots of different things. Compulsive behavior for sports, compulsive behavior for washing your hands and cleanliness and germ phobia. But it can also turn into compulsive behavior for addictions and drugs. Interesting. And if you have some genetic background in addiction, uh, you know, a, a good statistic we always use is if one of your parents has been addicted to a substance over their lifetime, they've been an alcoholic or they've had some problems with, with pills, mm -hmm. uh, with heroin, with other things, then you stand about a 40% chance of becoming addicted. If both parents are, uh, have been addicted and they're in recovery, you stand probably an 80% chance. So... If wow. you know those things, you can be particularly careful. And I think what we always tell people is just don't start. Mm -hmm. If a uh, 14 <laughs> or 15 year old uses easy something, to say, huh? it yeah. is easy to say. And you know, well, we know 14, yeah. 15 year olds don't make good judgments. Their yeah, brain's yeah. not developed. Yeah. So it takes some time. So if, you, if they use a substance uh, you know, on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and that includes marijuana, mm -hmm. uh, for two or three times a week, they'll stand a significantly 40% chance of becoming addicted in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, if they wait until they're about 21 or 22, there's a 7% chance. So just think of it as the ways we can sort of cut back on those chances that mm. people become addicted to a substance. Mm. Because once you have it, it's a lifetime disease, and the brain never truly recovers. Mm -hmm. So it's a lifetime disease. You know, one of the things I thought was probably the most fascinating, at least for me, was the fact that how... Uh, it changes if you start young, too young, uh, on any any drug, anything that c can be addictive. It changes the way the brain develops, like right. the, the the synapses and the all of that stuff change mm -hmm. changes drastically. It seemed it sounded like from the seminar. So really interesting on how that that works. And 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 to your point, you know, if people, you know, not that we want anybody to do drugs, but if you start much later, it doesn't mess up your your mind as much. Uh, the development of your mind as much as it would if you start at, you know, 14, 15, 12, yep. 10 years old, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Absolutely. And Dr. Mm. Boutique will talk about that. Right. She'll talk about adults. W one, yeah. one of the things that our pastor, Father Clancy, speaks about quite often, mm -hmm. and he said, he, in fact, he spoke at Gwila one time, Bill, if yeah. you remember. Uh -huh. He said, as, as all of us look out over our parishioners, 70% of us either know someone who has an addiction problem. Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be pills or, or heroin. It could be alcohol. It could be anything, okay? Mm -hmm. And one in ten of us have someone in our family. Yep, so I, I believe mean it. It's a, yep. the, uh, Bill, why don't you give them a little oversight of, of the uh, people that we do have coming to the Lowell House? I mean, how many people are there? How many, how many patients do we have in total? Well, we did a something a little different this time, Dave. Uh, okay. which I think is going to be very interesting. Uh, after Dr. Poteet presents, and she does about an hour presentation, it mm -hmm. feels like about two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh but yeah. after she's done with that, we have what we've called the voices of recovery. And the voices of recovery are people that are either in recovery, but this time we decided to use family members and do right. with family members. Mm -hmm. So there are actually uh, four or five parents and two grandparents. We had the grandparents oh, wow. there at our meeting. We had a, Dave and I had a meeting this morning, mm -hmm. uh, our board of advisors, and the grandparents were there. And the grandparents have a different role, a much more active role in, in their grandchildren's yeah, lives. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're going to get up and talk about it. Uh, two parents have lost their children, uh, Louise Griffin and Karen Donovan, and they're both going to talk a little bit about the kinds of things that Dr. Boti says that they would have done and the difference it would have made in their lives potentially. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have a parent with a child that's in recovery, and she'll talk about it in our Zach's House program, mm -hmm. and sort of how they, they manage on a regular basis. So these are very important things to listen to, and uh, mm -hmm. I think it'll be great feedback. It's powerful. The, the <coughs> one that I filmed last time, which I'm gonna, I have a clip up I was going to show, but uh, uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the room when you looked around during some no. of the, that presentation. I mean, when people are telling their stories, you're, you're going, wow, like this is... I mean, this is real. You're real. You know, you're hearing people's real stories from their mouth, and it's you know, it makes you well up a little bit because it's it's you know, it's sad and it's scary and it's frustrating, but also moving at the same time, uh, you know, in a good way because people are able to s at least talk about it. You That's know, right. So that helps. That's one right. one of the people that spoke, and I won't use any names, mm -hmm. but I mean, I remember distinctly him telling 
the crowd that was there that he and his mother were alcoholics and they both quit the same day. Really? Right. Yep. Right. That, that, that really got me. Yeah. Well, and one of the women that's going to be speaking is Karen Donovan, and she's a member of oh. the, the church. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful person. And uh, she lost her son a few years ago at 37 or 38. Mm -hmm. He'd have been in recovery, and she thought, I am home free. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we'll always tell people <coughs> is be vigilant. You know, you're going to be dealing with recovery at 70 and 80. Mm -hmm. It's still going to get yeah. urges, mm -hmm. and you're still going to get cravings. Uh, but one thing that she will do at the end, and it took a while to convince her about this, Dave. She has a wonderful voice, yeah. and she sings uh, just uh, inspiring <coughs> songs. And she is going to bless us with a song at the very end uh, to sort of uh, you know, close the whole thing, a song of inspiration mm -hmm. from the crowd. <coughs> so I think they're going to be through the emotional ring, and they're going to hear all the facts. They're going to hear some dramatic stories. Mm -hmm. They're going to hear some good advice, and then in the end, they're going to have a song of inspiration, I think, to send them home. Excellent. Excellent. I, th I think one of the things that really got me was uh, recently we had a breakfast, and Marty Walsh from Boston was one of the speakers. And I can remember at the Democratic Convention a few years back, mm -hmm. he got up in front of that convention. He says, my name is Marty Walsh. I'm an alcoholic. I remember <laughs> that, actually. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing I mean, clips of that. That yeah. takes a lot of guts. It does, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other speaker we had, there was Michael Botticelli, and Michael Botticelli yeah. was the, uh, the drug czar for President Obama for four years, and in the middle of that time, he went on 60 Minutes. Now, this is, this is also courage, and he admitted to people that he was an alcoholic on 60 Minutes, and he shocked them. They weren't expecting that, huh. and he said, I just want to get it out on the table. I'm an alcoholic, and I've been an alcoholic. You know, I'm in recovery, and I've been in recovery for many years. So that was a shocker, and those two people, I think, did a wonderful presentation. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I, let me just uh, quickly reset, just so folks know, this is Things Road TV Live, and you're watching a uh, special edition. Uh, we're talking about the uh, um, addiction uh, conference event that's going to be happening uh, on November 8th uh, from 7 to, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, over at the Lowell Elks Lodge. Uh, the uh, keynote speaker is Dr. Ruth Poti. She's going to be talking about a number of things, including how, how addiction affects the mind and all that, and then there'll be the... Uh, discussion after from a number of uh, parents and grandparents of um, uh, people who were addic uh, who were addicted. Uh, some have passed and some have survived. Uh, but uh, if you want to check that out, it's a free event. It's on November 8th. So like I said, it's over at the Lowell Elks Lodge. Uh, if you want to uh, check out or get more information on that, you can visit the, uh, the Lowell, uh, Lowell House's website, uh, lowellhouseinc.org, and there's a bunch of info on there so you can go and get some more information about the event. Uh, a fascinating event. If you have, uh, have, have anybody in your family, which, you know, one in ten... One in ten people have somebody in their family that's, that's got an addiction issue. Uh, if you have anybody in your family that has any issues, definitely something you check, should check out. If you have young children, uh, if you even if you're just curious on how, how this stuff really works and you want to hear directly from somebody who's a she's Dr. Poche, I believe is a neurosurgeon, right? Uh, no, she's a family physician. A family, family physician, physician, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, she's extremely smart. She knows exactly what she's talking about. It puts on a very riveting presentation. And then again, of course, the, uh, the, dem the presentation after with the uh, family members. So if you want to check that out, definitely I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you'd like to watch last year's event, you can check it out. I was throwing a clip up uh, really quickly just so you could see um, uh, see a little bit of it anyways. But uh, if you want to uh, watch that, that's available at uh And I will put the link in the comment section after this show so you can watch, uh, watch that if you'd like to catch a catch it and see kind of how the how the presentation goes if maybe if you're not able to make it this year but uh, lots of people showed up for it last year it was a packed room at the Lowell Elks, Elks Lodge uh, you know for uh, moving on now before so for folks who who are going to be going to this or hoping to go to this what are some of the things that they can expect to uh, to get from this well I think first of all they're going to learn about addiction they're going to learn why addiction happens how it happens mm -hmm. how the brain changes and why that makes a major difference uh, it, it, this all began about 1997 okay. with a guy named Dr. Alan Lesher, and Dr. Alan Lesher was the first, and his published paper was, Addiction is a Brain Disease and It Does Matter. Uh, and it really does when you look at it. Mm -hmm. So she'll explain why the cravings don't go away, why it's so difficult to get a person into recovery and to stay in recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a lot about uh, ages of recovery of uh, teenagers and how they develop. Uh, she'll talk about older people in mm -hmm. recovery. Uh, she goes through all of that in a fascinating presentation. And then from there, she's going to go and talk about uh, what can you do about it. Uh, she'll say things to parents like, go in your child's room. Don't ask their permission. Go in. <laughs> take a look. Yeah. See, if there's th see if you find yeah. paraphernalia in there. Right. 
It's right. your job to protect your child and don't think, and this is what a lot of parents feel. And, you know, I have, I have uh, kids with young children, and uh, my advice is the same to them. Uh, you know, find out. The earlier you find out, the more you can prevent. So right. she'll, she'll, she gives great advice. Uh, but what they can also expect is a great presenter who's funny, and uh, you think, what could be funny about this? Well, some of the stuff is so ironic, uh, and, you know, she really is entertaining in, in, in delivering this message. Mm -hmm. And she speaks about it as a family disease, mm -hmm. and it is a family disease. I mean, if you've got three kids and one of them is an addict, the other two are going to be treated, you know, completely different than that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they're not going to get away with anything. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Do you, do you think that maybe this is the uh, this could be the the way that we finally combat the you know this the opiate problem and just ad addiction problems in general? Maybe this is this is it. This is the key. Well, I think it certainly is one of the keys. I mean, th there is there's a number of keys. Mm -hmm. One is that we need more services. Mm -hmm. We need probably if we doubled what we had now, it still wouldn't be enough for the volume of people we have in Greater Lowell that have addiction issues. Mm -hmm. So we don't have enough recovery beds. We don't have enough treatment people. We don't have enough people to help face the problem. Mm -hmm. And then if we doubled our efforts in prevention in the school system, if we help build stronger kids, uh, emotionally and socially stronger kids, uh, kids that are resilient and able to stand sort of the pressures mm -hmm. of using drugs and yeah. understand that, because kids aren't scared. Mm -hmm. You're not scared at 14. You're right. not scared of anything at 14. You don't <laughs> We're know any better. At 14. Uh, you do crazy <laughs> things at right. 14, 15. <laughs> and that's when a lot of kids get hooked on pills and, and other things. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think there are a lot of keys to the prevention piece. Uh, there's certainly a lot of keys to the treatment piece. Mm -hmm. uh, but understanding is the way we all begin. Mm -hmm. By understanding and have a better understanding of this. And I would like to see every priest, every rabbi, every faith person that can be an inspiration to families, mm -hmm. that can help in the whole uh, understanding and basically in, in uh, helping people use that, that sense of faith they have uh, to really help them through recovery and help them through drug issues, mm -hmm. family issues, hold the families together. So uh, my hope is that in the end, we'll have every rabbi, every priest, every imam trained Excellent. in what this means. Excellent. Well, this, that's why I asked that question is, is because I feel like you hit, it, hit the nail on the head, understanding is I think where it has to start. If people understand the problem, then they can say, "Well, hey, now what do we do to, you know, let's work on prevention. Let's, but let's also take care of the people on the other end who are already addicted and so on." One of the things Bill talked about is we need more beds. Mm -hmm. We need more sober houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this poor young guy or girl overdoses, and they throw them into Lowell General or whatever, and they're there for three days and they're back out on the street. Right. Yeah. We all know where they're yeah. going. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I'll bet you one in a thousand don't uh, go straight after that. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's unfortunate. It taxes the services, the emergency rooms, the, the law yeah. enforcement, you know, ambulance, everybody. You know, all those people who get affected by that or interact with that. So. Well, we were talking this morning at this meeting that Bill mentioned about some of the ambulance drivers that, that give Narcan mm -hmm. to the people that overdose. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. They're going to lose that high. Right. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, and, and that, that's, that's a sad consequence. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that the, through this seminar at least, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like through this seminar at least if you go and you do, do uh, get to attend, or if you maybe just watch the, the one that we've already recorded, uh, you'll get a better understanding uh, of how this affects people. And then maybe, you know, to your point earlier, uh, you know, go into your kids' rooms or, or you know, uh, make sure, you know, look for these things. Look for paraphernalia or try just try to catch it early. Don't let it fester for too long, you know. Uh, I can say one thing about this, Steve. Mm -hmm. In the end, if you go to Dr. Poteet's presentation, you will never think the same about addiction, mm -hmm. uh, about your family members who have addiction issues. You'll never think the same way about it again. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's said in the most positive way. Mm -hmm. so. Let me ask you this, not, not to get too political with this, but, but the, you know, the state just uh, recently legalized marijuana. Do you feel like that was a negative or a, or a positive or just kind of indifferent to this whole situation? Well, there were two, two sections of that. Yep. For adults, 
we don't really care. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, adults can have a drink when they want to. Uh, right. They will abuse substances from time to time, mm-hmm. but at least they do it in a conscious kind of way, understanding what they're doing. Mm-hmm. We care a lot about kids until the brain develops. Now, the brain doesn't develop until about 24, 25, mm-hmm. fully developed. So we're going to have a lot of 21-year-olds with access to marijuana, but it's going to become increasingly accessible to kids in the school, right, and yeah. uh, that's what we worry about because, mm-hmm. again, it is definitely related to addiction. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, unfortunately, the federal government has not done a lot of research on marijuana because it's still illegal on a federal basis. Mm-hmm. So I think we have a, a lot of work to do on that, but we know anecdotally, we know from other countries, uh, this has not helped the situation. It's actually made it worse. Okay. Interesting. Well, I, I'm concerned that it's a gateway drug. That once they get hooked on marijuana, they're going to look for something else to get a little higher, mm-hmm. and stay a little higher. Mm-hmm. Sure, fair enough. Well, and 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 to what we mentioned earlier about it, you know, where it changes the the, the brain and it could potentially Absolutely. make you a little more addictive to other things. You're right. I mean, that de- right. definitely could That's potentially lead to that. So, right. Yeah. At least making it easier, if nothing else. That's know, right. For that person to be addicted to something else. So. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a, it's going to be a fascinating uh, uh, presentation. Uh, again, November 8th uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. over at the Lowell uh, Elks Lodge on Old Ferry Road. Uh, if you're able to make it out, uh, very, very interesting presentation. Uh, and then the discussion after, obviously, very moving presentation. It's not, uh, you know, you, you leave, you're right, you leave thinking very differently about how addiction works and, well, yeah, and, and it affects it people. And it is a multimedia presentation, so you get nice visuals of yep. all the things you're going to talk about. Yep. The, the other thing I want to mention, though, Steve, sure. is that yep. Uh, we will have a number of different organizations, including Learn to Cope, okay. uh, Lowell House. Mm-hmm. We'll have some addiction professionals there. So, police you know, if departments. You, police departments. Mm-hmm. And if we're worried about Uncle Joe and, you know, what's going on, there'll be time afterwards or even before the presentation to go up and talk a little bit about that to them. Excellent. And uh, maybe get a little advice, some literature, mm-hmm. and set something up for the future. So would you say that this would be an excellent event for somebody who maybe they have a, a young <coughs> child uh, or, like you said, Uncle Joe or some relative to bring that person to the to an event like this? Oh, I think it'd be great. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We, we love having teenagers there. We ha- love having young parents, older parents. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you, now that I'm a grandparent and uh, with four great grandchildren, congratulations! Uh, I'll show you the pictures later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I really feel that that yeah. uh, you don't understand how close grandparents get to their children, yeah. and that's why we're having a couple of grandparents also talk about. Oh, good. That. Okay, yeah. But I, you know, grandparents feel helpless because they see their own Absolutely. kids going through all these these horrors, yep. and they see their grandchildren uh, in and out of rehab facilities and they want to know what can I do mm-hmm. well we're going to talk a little bit about what you can do and that's you know, a poor system that's necessary you know Excellent. after the presentation I myself would drive down the street and see these kids carrying signs with a little bucket you know they want this give me a job mm-hmm. give me we know it's not a job or food that they want right. yeah unfortunately but I looked down at them prior to this presentation and now I look sadly upon them really and say, I wish I could help them. Interesting. So it's actually changed the way you view, oh, absolutely. view these people. Yeah. It, it has to, because now you know they can't get out of it by themselves. They need help. You know, I had a, a similar experience. It wasn't with people, the, the bucket holders or the sign holders, but it was just, uh, I forget what it was, what I was watching, but it was talking about um, uh, Tent City in California. Oh, yeah. Tent City. Yeah. And how the majority of them are there for for some type of drug use or, or, or something like that. They're there because they can't you know can't move ahead in life because of it. And it, it made me think a little differently about how these people you know they they're they're not because they want to be but because their mind is a little bit oh stuck yeah. in that in that addiction phase and they're unable to get out of it. Maybe they didn't have the support structures that you know we we wish they did the family structure and so on uh, or the religious structure to help them you know give them something or somebody to lean on. So. Yeah. It's amazing how many people, like I said, looking at the, at the congregation. Mm-hmm. But I don't care where you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bill and I were in a restaurant about a year ago, and we happened to spot these three Greek priests that walk in. And, oh, yeah, boy, we want to help. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know the people that own that restaurant, and I was there one Saturday night a few weeks ago and mm-hmm. said to one of the owners, you know, how about giving us some money for this thing? We need some sponsors. Sure. And I turned around, and this lady handed me a $50 bill. Oh, wow. 
having nothing to do with the restaurant. She said, I know this is a big problem. Here, I hope this helps. Wow, nice. Very <laughs> nice. People are, people are very generous, and so many people have been affected by it. Yeah. So I think they, they're looking for solutions and look for people to help, and that's what we're there for. Do you, do you generally, when you talk about this with folks outside of this, do you generally have a positive reaction from people? Uh, when we talk about yeah. the event, or the, when we talk the about the event, and well, just the fact that you're trying to help in the way you're trying to do it, do you get? Oh, you know? I, I think so. It's it's not quite the stigma it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I think people understand more. Mm -hmm. It's been so widespread. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't forget the federal government just raised. I don't know whether you saw in the paper about a week ago. They were estimating that one percent of the population had an addiction problem. Uh, they said, "Whoops, we made a mistake. Our data was incorrect. It's now five percent." Oh. So I it, didn't see that actually. No, that's no. a lot of people that's in this a country. Lot, yeah. It's a lot of people. So I think people know. And when Dave says, you know, one of ten, that's that's about that's what they use. Okay. Uh, but the other thing is, two thirds, about seventy-five percent of the people know someone, have someone, and uh, people are beginning to understand that it's just not a choice anymore. Mm -hmm. What addicts will often say is, "I don't choose the drug; the drug chooses me." and uh, they get caught in this terrible cycle. Mm -hmm. So I think people want to help and they want to find a way, and almost everyone knows someone that's lost a child mm -hmm. or a loved one because of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to say that I, I commend both of you and the work that you do. It's not easy, uh, definitely a difficult, it's difficult subject, to, subject matter to discuss and to help combat, to work on. So um, uh, thank you for the efforts that you both put in on, on trying to uh, help people and to put this event together. I think this is a, a wonderful event. I really hope that everybody gets a chance to get out there uh, again, November 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. over at the Lowell Oaks Lodge at uh, 40 uh, Old Ferry Road, uh, number 40 Old Ferry Road. And yep. so you can, uh, it's a free event, too. Pl free event, yep. plenty of parking, yeah. big Tons. parking lot. Yes. Yep. So it's not like downtown, we have to pay for the parking. Right. So uh, <laughs> it's a watch out for the meter maids down there. That's right. <laughs> and, and thank you, Steve, for doing this. Uh, this is the Absolutely. way we you get the word much. out. Yep. Yep. So, uh, you know, and anybody that has any questions, mm -hmm. uh, I will I will check into the Facebook page a couple of times. If you have questions, put them down. I Great. will respond to that. Okay. Uh, or call us at Lowell House. We're there, and that's what we're there for. So There you go. All right. So, uh, again, any questions, feel free to uh, leave them on the Facebook page, or you can go to LowellHouseInc.org. You can uh, get the rest of the information about the uh, the presentation that will be happening on November 8th with Dr. Poti. Uh, and you can, I'm assuming you can probably call Lowell House. You can get the uh, contact informa information there as well if you would like to contact Lowell House directly, maybe if you need some services or want to, uh, you know, bring a, uh, a relative or a friend or somebody that you know that's affected by this problem. Uh, uh, definitely an event that would be highly recommended, I would say. Uh, I can tell you, I can tell you, we always return calls mm -hmm. and we never judge. Excellent. Good. As it should Very be. True. That's, that's as it Very should be. True. Right. Yep, this isn't one of those things that you can judge because it <laughs> it's, it's, it's the way it needs to be because you well. need to be able to help these people and make that's it right. open for them so they'll tell you their problem and and hopefully reach out and get some get some help for themselves. So, uh, again, I commend you guys for the work you do. Uh, for any folks out there, again, if you have any questions, information uh, that you'd like to gather, uh, lowellhouseinc.org if you want to get some information there. Uh, the event is November 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Ol Lowell Elks Lodge on Old Ferry Road. Uh, pretty easy to find. Big building on the right side is the only one there. So Not easy <laughs> to say, but easy to find. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that said, folks, I hope you guys have a great day. Do you, do you guys have anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? No, thanks. Have, okay. a, have a great Looking weekend, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you there. We'll Excellent. see you next week and say stop by and say hello when you're there. There you go. And uh, as, as just a quick mention, I will be out there filming this as well, so uh, you'll be able to watch this after the fact if you are unable to, to attend. However, I, I will say that the uh, watching it on film versus being there doesn't quite give you the same emotional effect. So uh, if you can Absolutely. be there, it's, uh, it's definitely something you'll want to go to, bring somebody with you if you, if you can. So uh, thanks again, everybody, Bill and uh, Dave, for coming in and chatting with us about the, uh, about the event. And uh, all that said, folks, hope you guys have a great day. Have a great rest of the weekend, and we will see you all next time. Take it easy, everybody. Bye. Thanks.